Good morning folks who clicked on this video. I am Bladeburger and welcome to my first impressions of the Halo Infinite multiplayer beta. Background footage is of random matches I've recorded on my Xbox Series S using a controller, just to get the inputs and stuff out of the way. Like the video? Be sure to do the stuff the algorithm likes. Now let's get into it. Ah, where to begin? We all know Halo's legacy as one of the kings of the gaming industry, reduced to shambles pretty recently with the terrible Halo 5 and the very rough launch of the Master Chief Collection. When Infinite was announced, I was skeptical, like many others, but I am very pleased and happy to be able to say that this is the best Halo multiplayer that has been created. You can tell the delay gave 343 the time to polish and perfect, and this multiplayer is as close to perfect as Halo multiplayer can be. A very fun and interesting sandbox, with old classics as well as new instant classics like the Skewer and Sidekick. Maps that rival the best maps ever created for Halo, and we haven't even seen all of them yet. We got 10 out of like the, what, like 16? Equipment that makes the gameplay vastly different from any other Halo game and any other FPS game. I absolutely love what 343 did to this game. It's a perfect mesh of old and new, with the classic Halo multiplayer updated to fit with the modern and next-gen shooters. It very easily surpasses the competition in just how good it plays. Vanguard, Destiny, and the new unplayable Battlefield are clunky messes compared to how Infinite plays. I'll have my own thoughts on Vanguard and Destiny 2 soon, and they're actually not good thoughts. I'm normally not a tryhard in most games, but the combat in Infinite makes it feel all too good and fun to be a tryhard. I don't get mad when I lose a gunfight because I know it's the result of my own failures. Me getting flanked, or the grenade placement was bad, or I just can't aim. Mostly I just can't aim. It's not Destiny where everyone runs around with broken builds and OP weapons because they grinded 3,000 hours to get it, and it's no Vanguard where you get killed by the same overpowered gun 30 times while respawning in the exact same place every single time while everyone uses the broken route glitch! Oh my god, Vanguard sucks. Nothing feels overpowered, nothing feels unfair. There's a few underpower things in Infinite, but they all still work in this sandbox. Let's talk about this sandbox. One of the downsides I see people say about this game is that there's not enough weapons and equipment in the multiplayer, or that they're missing some old weapons and equipment from previous games. Honestly, I think that's fine, as each weapon and equipment feels and plays unique from the next. Having to adapt to how each weapon plays makes the sandbox more enjoyable in my opinion. My favorite weapon in Infinite, the Mangler, plays very different from the Bulldog. There are both close range weapons that act like shotguns, but the Bulldog is very spammy while the Mangler requires precision for a crispy 3 tap. The Storm Rifle 2.0 that I can't remember the name of plays very differently from the Assault Rifle. Same rolls of medium to close range, but with different playstyles. The only thing I really dislike about Sit the Sandbox is how weak some of the weapons feel. The pistol that's just a shocky sunshot from Destiny feels very weak. The Stalker Rifle feels pretty weak as well. The Cinder Shot, I haven't even gotten a kill with that thing, and I've used it like 20 times. However, they still work in the sandbox when it's used just right. That's the joy of the sandbox. They feel weak, but still perform as well as you can use them. I can't aim well with the commando, so I don't pick it up as much as I would a mangler. Does that make it bad? Nah, it just means I can't aim. As for equipment, the weak and strong ones are a bit more noticeable. The grapple, thrust, repulsor, and overshield are all super strong. Yes, I am a fan of the thrust. You cannot change my mind. I believe in thrust and privacy. On the other hand, the drop wall and active camo feels pretty bad. I'm never happy to see them or see it on the ground. The wall is too easy to break and doesn't really help in moments of tense combat. Needs a buff. As for active camo, you're not- this is a fast-paced first-person shooter, why are you standing still? As for the threat sensor, it feels more like the middle grounds. I think it's fine. It's pretty underwhelming in BTB, but it's relatively strong in Arena. Speaking of BTB and Arena, let's talk about the game modes. I'll start with Arena, or the Quick Play playlist. I very much disliked Arena in Halo 5. The way the game was designed around the awful new abilities made it unfun to fight against people who know life that game and never touch grass. All people used was the Magnum and nothing else. Ah, oh, that game was oh, that game was so bad. This arena is a complete opposite. Each mode is very fun and each map in this beta works really well for the modes. Whereas Call of Duty Vanguard's map designs are too unbalanced and horrible, Infinite's arena maps require no learning curve to be able to perform well. You don't get spawn camped, you don't get spawn trapped, you don't spawn in the same spot 30 freaking times on DOS House. God, I hate DOS House. DOS House sucks. Anyways, 
The objectives are clearly marked and very accessible from many different routes and doorways. I wasn't a fan of Oddball in old Halo games, but I love it in Halo Infinite. Oh man, I can't get enough of Oddball. It feels really weird how you can't pick and choose the game mode like you can in Master Chief Collection. I don't hate any mode, but I can do without one flag CTF. Probably when the game fully launches? Hopefully? Anyways, on to BTB. Big Team Battle. It's been a staple of Halo for years, horribly done in Halo 5 and now beautifully brought back to us in Infinite. It's the most fun BTB that Halo has had, but it isn't without flaws. Heavy vehicles almost don't spawn at all. I've played easily 50 matches or so of Big Team Battle and have maybe seen a Scorpion or Wraith maybe once or twice. One happened to be while recording the footage here, so yay! Those made BTB more fun and risky in the older Halo games, swaying the battlefield very quickly. Is that enough to make me not want to play BTB? Of course not! The maps and modes play very well. Stockpile is my new favorite game mode in Infinite. It's very tense and exciting to be a carrier of a power cell, racing away from enemies to secure them. It has all the chaos of BTB with the objective play of Arena mixed into a fun package. The new Total Control mode is also good, but is prone to the issue that I'm discussing right here actually. The real only actual downside to BTB is snowballing. It's pretty present here, especially in the Total Control mode. Do I mind? Eh, not really. I'm having fun either way. It's just a thing to note. A lot of people were mad when AR starts were announced instead of BR starts, but it works better for this mode in gameplay. It's not the AR from previous games where it was weaker. This one is very well-rounded and reliable. Probably the best in the series, honestly. It fits well into BTB and the chaos that ensues. Everyone can use an AR and do well. Not everyone can slay with a battle rifle. It evens the playing feel more, and that's okay. AR starts are fine. Now let's get to the next topic, the HUD and menus. I don't really mind the locational changes in the HUD. It's fine to move locations for the ammo count and radar. Each FPS is different, so it's just getting used to where to look. The major flaw is swapping grenades, surprisingly. I still don't know how to swap, and I really don't care to do it. There's no control options or hotkey in the menu, so I don't even bother trying. The D-Pod swap from old Halo games was perfectly fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The rest of the HUD is fine, though. On to the menus. The options in this game are insane. You can do anything with them, molding the options to your liking. I like the ability to change the colors of friends and foes. Definitely a 10 out of 10 on the options. Don't really have much to say on the options. On to the next section. The customization and progression. Yay! It's not great. The customization in this beta is very bare bones if you don't buy the battle pass. We haven't seen what the campaign customization unlocks and what the free events have, but it had better be good because this system cannot last for the 10 years that Halo Infinite is supposed to go. Very few color options limit how a player can look, most lock behind payment. I've noticed, since everyone's progressing on very similar tiers with the battle pass system, everyone just looks the same. Kinda, kinda eh. The AI customization is honestly pretty useless, as you can only really hear your AI and not even see them. It does sometimes break too. I have a fret equipped, but sometimes hear butler in matches. A noticeable bug in a game with surprisingly few in a modern game. Back to the topic of customization and progression, there is very little to offer for free-to-play players. Just the base colors and visor colors, not much else. Very underwhelming compared to past Halo games. You can't even choose your color scheme out of primary colors without paying. Now, as for progression, it's almost worse. There's no leveling outside of challenges for the battle pass. The movement of progression is the same no matter how good you do in a game. You can get 30 kills in one death in one game, but get the same EXP as a guy who got 5 kills with a commando for his challenge. It feels very unrewarding for players who do good. They're working towards making it better, with the change made only three days the beta being out. But it's a start to a long process of fixing how truly bad the progression is. It seems all the effort put into the game and the year delay went towards polish, leaving a reason to play the multiplayer in the dust. It is very fun though. But that's the Halo Infinite beta, the newest entry to the Legendary series. I am in love with it. When the progression and customization gets fixed and the full game launches, I'm sure it'll rectify a lot of my gripes. I'll have a full first impressions and review video up soon after the campaign goes live. Maybe three to four days, maybe a week. Thank you all for watching. 
I'll have a video on the new Call of Duty game and Destiny 2 soon as well. See you all in the next one. Blade Burger out.